during this whole my internet is basically unusable thing, I also started having some system issues, which is a really fun combination and certainly something I wanted to deal with. And these weren't like, oh, the system is a little bit laggy or anything like that. No, these were very serious issues. The mouse would lock up, the audio would start looping, and then the screen would go black, the system reboots. This would happen multiple times a day. It would get in the way of videos, leisure, or anything else I was doing on the system, and it had to be dealt with. So this started me on a quest. Now the absolute first thing you should be doing anytime you have any sort of system issues before you start wasting your time trying to fix things that don't matter whatsoever is checking your system logs. Now, because I'm using Arch Linux, my logs are going to be managed by Journal D. So I can go and check those by using Journal CTL. And I can check the last boot I've done with Dash B. But that's not going to be that useful. I want to know the boot from when things actually crashed. So if we do Dash B and then Dash the number of boots back we want to go, it will show the logs for that boot. We can go and check all of our logs, but it really makes more sense to check what has been happening recently. And when I did this, absolutely nothing. Nothing of note. The logs looked perfectly fine. It would get to the point where I crashed, and the logs would just end. There was no warnings, no errors, nothing at all. It just ended. This is fairly common to see when you have hardware faults, but a hardware fault is the end game solution. You don't want to spend money, I don't want to spend money, and if I can find a solution that doesn't involve changing out hardware, I'm going to go with that. I want to upgrade my system when I want to upgrade it. So we'll leave that on the table, but that's a future problem. Now to look for patterns. High CPU usage, high GPU usage, high heat, high power usage, high IO usage, anything to link the state of the hardware with the symptoms I'm seeing in software. And there are countless tools out there to go and individually stress test all of these segments. And you know what? I didn't see any pattern. None at all. So then I started considering the previous crashes I had. Recording in OBS, which in my case is fairly GPU demanding, IO demanding to go and actually write the data to my disk, and then in some ways a bit CPU demanding. Light web browsing. This isn't really demanding in any discernible way. Video rendering, and in Caden Live, this is a single core CPU demanding task. And then finally, enabling Wi-Fi. I personally see no connection between these things. But there were some simple hardware things I could go and check to make sure everything's just going right on that side. Things like making sure my memory is seated properly. In my case, it absolutely was. Making sure all of the connectors in my system are attached properly. And yep, they certainly were as well. So that seemed like it was fine. I left my system running for a while and I had BTOP open. BTOP is an application that allows me to go and do things like check my CPU temperatures, check my IO, and all of that fun stuff. And I left it running. I had crashes at 60 degrees. I had crashes at 50 degrees. I had crashes at 80 degrees. So temperature didn't seem to be a contributing factor. But hey, maybe the temperature wasn't being read properly, and it never hurts to go and clean your system. I think the last time I'd cleaned it was about six or so months earlier. It wasn't as dusty as it's been in the past, but it was a little bit dusty. I cleaned it, I ran it for a day, it crashed. So that wasn't the problem either. And at that point, I basically just said, you know what, the problem's not real, I'm not gonna think about it, and I ran the system for a couple of days, and maybe the problem was gonna fix itself and it would just go away and we could just go back to the system working like it should. It didn't. Obviously. Obviously didn't fix it. And then we had my last ditch effort prior to replacing the hardware. And this is something I should have just done from the start and it would have been so much easier. Start digging around for similar cases because it's very likely that when you have a problem, unless you're running like bleeding edge hardware, someone else has probably had the exact same issue you've had. I did find some similar sounding symptoms and then I realized something. What about my BIOS? The only consistent factor between all of these things is all of this hardware is connected to my motherboard. This system has been rock solid stable for a couple of years now, but the BIOS my motherboard is running 
I think it wasn't the original BIOS, but it was like two or three versions after the original. And there were maybe like 15 or 20 updates that I'd never applied. And the crashes started happening the day after I did a kernel update. So maybe by some like weird chance, I'm just throwing stuff at the wall here. Maybe my kernel was too new for the BIOS I was running and I needed to go and update the BIOS, otherwise it would just randomly crash. It doesn't make any sense why that would occur, but that was the thought process I was going with. So I went over to the ASUS website, I found the motherboard I have, the ASUS Prime X570P, I found the latest BIOS which was available, which at my time was 4021, 4204 was still in beta, and considering my system was already crashing, I didn't exactly want to run a beta BIOS. And ASUS, along with a bunch of other motherboard manufacturers, ship the BIOS file with the wrong name. I don't know why, it's a practice that should stop. Because it also ships with a script that names the file the right thing. So you can just like skip that step and give me the file with the right name. This script is a Windows script, but if you just go and change the file name manually, you'll be good then. So I stuck the BIOS or UEFI file on my thumbstick, whatever you want to call it. I plugged it into my system, I went through the process in my UEFI to install the update, it installed successfully, I think it took like 15 or 20 minutes, and the crashes, after one day, three days, seven days, stopped. No crashes whatsoever. So I thought, problem solved. Problem was not solved because the following day, another crash occurred. For the record, there were some other things I should have tried. For example, using a minimal installation of my setup, basically disabling everything that doesn't need to be enabled, and also going and trying basically a live CD. If the crash happened on a live CD, I could then say it's not related to the software running on my system, it has to be a hardware issue. So I use Powerline Ethernet adapters to get internet on my system. And if you're in a situation where you are forced to use Wi-Fi, these are an absolutely OP upgrade and I recommend them to everyone. Basically the idea is you run your Ethernet over your power lines. I don't know how it works, it's some form of magic and it doesn't work nicely in older houses, but anything relatively modern, you're gonna be good to go. But prior to that, I was using Wi-Fi and for about a year and a half, this thing has sat in my computer, basically doing nothing. But recently I was testing a program which hooks into Network Manager, and every time I enabled Wi-Fi, my system crashed. But unlike the previous set of crashes where it was like a random set of crashes, this was very consistent. I would enable Wi-Fi, a couple of seconds later, system would slow down, everything would lock up, and it would just crash. So I gave it a check, and I realized this is why there was that really weird extra addition to that list. I realized this card hasn't been seated properly for about, um, I don't know, a long time. But be <laughs> because I haven't been using Wi-Fi, it hasn't been a problem. The second I enabled it, though, and made the card actually process something, then it realized it wasn't seated properly and decided to kill my system. But now, even though I know the problem, it's, uh, it's still not in my system. And that's because I don't need it. It was only in there for that temporary period before I remembered that Powerline adapters existed. This was the cheapest Wi-Fi card I could find. The fact that I managed to get it working on Linux is sort of a testament to say how much Linux has improved with its Wi-Fi drive. It's still not perfect, but... um. At least you can get something random like this working. So make sure when you say you tested everything, you double check to make sure you actually did test everything and you don't leave something random not being tested. I like computers, they are really cool. But computers are incredibly complex and don't assume that you know what the issue is just by seeing what the problem looks like. Make sure you go and do that proper checking so you don't go and, you know, waste your time replacing your GPU or replacing your CPU when all it was was maybe a software issue or maybe memory that wasn't seated properly or anything like that. Make sure you go and try out the easiest solutions first as you try to diagnose the problem. And also don't just rely on yourself. Maybe go and post on some forums with all of the relevant information you've found, or maybe go and check if anyone else has had a similar problem to the one you're having and try out their solution if, 
if it's something that is reasonable to do. Maybe someone has had the exact same issue and it solves all of your problems. So let me know down below about some of the computer problems that you've had and how you've gone about solving them. Maybe you went through the process of trying to go through your logs and check your hardware and things like that, or maybe you just gave up and bought a Mac. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers and, li and Libero Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.